Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial. This is going to be the final part of the DIY corset top. First part was the bus cup tutorial. The second part was the pattern tutorial. And now we're getting into the sewing tutorial. The main fabric for this top is this beautiful embroidered eyelet fabric and it's from Longin Craft. You can get 10% off your first order when you use the code FABRIC10. I'll also be using this silk taffeta for the underlay, plastic boning for the corset bodies and for the opening on the front of the top I'll be using this bra hook trim. Now you can replace this with either a box, an open end zipper or a lacing if you like. So here I've laid out both my main fabric and the underlay so that I'm able to cut together. I've pinned my pattern pieces in place also making sure they're on the right grain. Now I'm just going to cut out. After cutting out my pattern pieces, I made sure to notch all the important points. Now I'm going to pin together each piece of the fabric and the underlay so that I'm able to baste before joining the seams. After basting, I'm going to attach each of my pattern pieces together by using 1.5 centimeters as the seam allowance or 5 eighths of an inch. After joining the seams, I went ahead to also press them out. Also my boning channels, I've pressed according to the direction I want them to face. Before I go ahead and top stitch the boning channel, I'm going to trim down the bottom seam to about a quarter of an inch so that it is less bulky when I insert the boning. Basically repeat the same process on all sides of the boning channel. Next is to install the bra hook trim on the center front of the top. First, I'm going to face the center gap of the top using a bias trim. Now here's what it looks like after. To measure and mark the length of the trim that I'm going to need for the center front, I'm going to place the hook at the top edge, making sure the first hook is touching directly the top of the center front. Now towards the hem of the top, make sure to leave about 3 quarter of an inch to about 1 inch. Now that I have the desired length, I'm going to knot the top of the trim on the hook and then lay on the center front. Now I'm going to make sure the outer edge is laying on the outside side of the seam, like so. Leaving a half inch over the center gaps of the top, I'm going to pin the trim on the center front line like so. Now to hold it in place, I'm going to baste it down using an invisible foot. To face this part in, I'm going to iron open my bias trim to make sure it's wide enough. Place it over the top edge like so with just quarter of an inch going towards the outside of the seam. The goal is to sew directly in front of the trim but making sure there's spacing in between for the hooks to pass through. It helps if you use a slightly transparent bias trim. This way you can see the hooks when you're sewing because they're so tiny it's hard to see them. So here I'm using my seam repart to like fill them while I go. And when you get to the next hook, make sure to backstitch, skip, and then backstitch again and then continue the process till you get to the end. Make sure the spacing or the gap you're leaving in front of each hooks is not too wide. 
otherwise you will have the trim trying to pop out when you fasten the corset or the top. Now after sewing that part, I'm going to pull out the hook through the seams like so. So this is what it should look like when you're done. Next I'm going to trim off some of the seam allowance and top stitch from the right side of the fabric. Now I'm only trimming my seam allowance because my bias trim was not wide enough. So if you use a wider bias trim, you don't have to trim down. Now I'm going to fold the bias towards the wrong side of the fabric, pin in place and then top stitch. Now when you're done, repeat the exact same process to the other side of the front and this is what they would both look like. And here's a quick check on my dress form. Before I top stitch the boning channels, I'm going to go ahead and overlock all the seams. I'm going to use a boning to measure out the size of my top stitch just to make sure it fits in perfectly. Once I'm okay with how the boning fits, I'm going to repeat the same process on all sides of the boning channels. Next, I pin both side seams and stitch them with one inch, which was my seam allowance. After stitching, I made two boning channels on opposite sides of the seams. Next, I joined the center back seams using half an inch. So this is what it looks like so far. All my boning channels has been top stitched and all the seams has been pressed out. To finish the seams along the top, I'm going to use a bias trim, sew down with half an inch and top stitch. And when you're doing the top stitch, make sure to leave spacing or gap right around the point where the bone is going to pass through. This way, the bone is going to reach all the way to the top of the neckline instead of stopping below the top stitch. I actually missed that step here, but when it was time to insert the boning, I opened up the seams. So moving on, I already have my boss cups prepared using the exact same method from the first tutorial. But if you haven't seen it, I'm going to link it in the descriptions and in the cards above. So here I have my underwire and also my bonings. I've already cut and melted the edges so they're just ready to be inserted. All I did to prepare the boning was just remove one inch from the length of each of my boning channels. Next thing to do is to attach the cups to the bodies like so. When pinning the cups to the bodies, make sure to eliminate any fold whatsoever under the cups. After pinning, just sew along the half inch allowance that's already left on the cups. Here I'm going to use my bias tape to finish the inside of the cups. This is also going to serve as my underwire channel. This is what it looks like after stitching. Next, I'm going to trim down the seam allowance around the underbust of the cups, just to reduce the bulk around that area. Now before top stitching the underwire over the underbust area of the cups, I like to first insert the bonings into the channel, giving it that push and support that is required for the underbust area. Now at this point all my bonings are in, the next thing to do is to top stitch the underbust area. To do this, just carefully pin in place and making sure the seams around the underbust area is well covered. Now doing it this way just makes it easier, you don't have to worry about fold when you're sewing. Now 
Now using the invisible foot, carefully sew about a quarter of an inch around this area. Now once you get to the point of the boning, make sure to backstitch and then skip over the boning and then backstitch before continuing the seam. Now just repeat this process if there's any boning around the underbust area until you get to the end of your seam. So here is it all finished, next is to insert the underwire. Now around the points that will skip, you would have to finish using a hand stitch to close up the gap so that the underwire doesn't poke out through that spacing over time. If you have an uneven underwire like this, make sure the shortest part is facing towards the center front and the higher part is facing towards the side seam. After inserting the underwire, you're going to do a top stitch right at the top of the center front and on the side of the cups, basically the point where the underwire was inserted. And that's to just properly secure it so that it doesn't come out over time. So the top part of the corset is done. We're now moving on to the bottom part, which has the gutter detail or the ruffles. So I'll be bringing back the bottom piece of my pattern just to show you guys the idea of how I'm going to achieve this part. The bottom part of the corset top is going to follow the shape of the waistline. So on the center front on the bottom part, I'm going to measure one inch down from the waistline or from where the back's waistline stopped. Then towards the side of the front, I'm going to measure four and a half inch and also four and a half inch on the back part of the bottom. The width of my ruffle is going to be two yards, which is 36 inches on fold, which I've done here. Now mind you, I'm also trying to keep the scallop in place so I want the hem of the top completely straight. So the shaping is going to happen on top of the ruffles. Now I'm going to mark the width of my back ruffles and also the width of the front ruffles. So I marked less for the back ruffles and more for the front ruffles. That's because the front bodies on this pattern is usually wider than the back. Next I'm going to mark that point or make a notch. So that notch is going to serve as my side seams or my side point. Also take note, the center back of the ruffles is going to be on fold and the front open. So measuring on the center front from the self edge, I'm going to mark one and a half inch up and then basically connect the four and a half inch and slant it down to the one and a half inch to the center front. So from the center back to the side seams is going to be four and a half inch in length and then on the center front is going to be one and a half inch. Next, I'm going to cut along the marked line and trim around the curves on the self edge. So here my scallop or self edge is already trimmed. I also went ahead to cut an underlay for this part. Now I'm just going to pin in place and baste to run my gather. I usually use two lines of basting stitch to run the gather. Now I'm just going to pull till it matches the waistline, also making sure each of the side notches is matching. After matching the gathers to the waistline, I'm going to sew down using half an inch, overlock this area and then pull off the basting stitch. So the waistline is done and this is what it's looking like. Moving on to the finer details of this top is the sleeve. So just like the shape of the waistline, the sleeve will also take the shape of the up hole. So here I already have my basic sleeve block. I'm going to link a tutorial in the card and in the description. First, I'm going to mark out the one inch for my side seam on the sleeves. Next, I'm going to measure the width of the armhole from the side seam and mark that measurement from the seam along the front of the sleeve. And then from that point, connect down to the opposite side of the seam using a French curve. Now I'm going to mark the length of my sleeve here. I used 18 inches and I'm going to just connect across like so. Next, I'm going to cut through both the length and the top of the sleeve along the marked line. So 
So here I'm placing the sleeve on the armhole so you can just have an idea of how it's going to fit. To add the puff details on the sleeve, I'm going to cut through the first and the second line. And then on the third line, I'm just going to slash and I'm going to cut through entirely. Next, I'm going to lay the pattern piece on my underlay, which is already being folded on a bias grain. Now I'm going to cut open the first two lines so that I can have more fullness around the top of the sleeve. For the spacing between each of the pattern pieces, I didn't really measure because I was just using the width of my underlay. I wanted to just maximize the width. But for reference, you can add about 4 to 5 inches between each of the slash on the bottom and about 2 to 3 inch on top. Next, I'm going to lay it back on my main fabric and cut. After cutting, the next thing to do is to face the top and the bottom of the sleeve, basically to create a channel for my elastic to pass through. Next, I'm going to lay the main fabric over the underlay with right sides facing. Again, for reference, the smaller curve fits around the armhole and the larger curve fits around the shoulder. Next, I'm going to pin both fabric together, so half inch along the bottom and half inch along the top on the wider curve. Now, after sewing both seams, I went ahead to do a top stitch where I will be passing my elastic through on the bottom and on the top like so. Next, I'm going to attach my elastic to my safety pin and take it through the channels like so. Now I'm going to ruche both the top and the bottom to my desired width, making sure it fits around my upper arm where the armhole area is and the bottom as well. If you've made it to this point of the tutorial, I'm going to applaud you because I know it's been a long one. Thank you so much for sticking around and please do not forget to leave a like, a comment or just share your feedback on this type of tutorial. I'd love to know what you guys think. I know this is the first time I've recorded such detailed sewing tutorial. If you guys would like more of this, I'd love your feedback. After getting my desired width, I'm going to face around the ammo area using mm -hmm. my bias trim. So here's what that looks like. The next thing to do is to join the side seams using one inch. So here my seams are done. The sleeve is ready. The next thing to do is to just attach it to the side of the armhole. Now my intention was to make this sleeve detachable but guys I got so tired I just ended up stitching it right around that area. So just going to pin in place and then I just ran a stitch closer to the top of the armhole. I didn't use a regular half inch seam allowance because that was not the intent. But guys, that's it. We've made it to the end of this tutorial. I know it's a long one. If you kept up from part one, part two, part three, put the hands up emoji in the comment section now. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you're new and if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.